Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. So here we go again. So the statistical process. Um, so we did this in class. We finished this in class. You should review this. You should definitely review this. Um, see the answers and ask yourself why are these why are these the answers? But in terms of the statistical process, I would argue that the statistical process is meant for you to implement a statistical technique and be as thorough as possible. It is what it is. This is a way for you to be as thorough as possible. So if I, if I was doing a confidence interval for one population mean or one population proportion, these are kind of the thoughts that I should have. Okay. This, this doesn't mean that you always have to do this. It doesn't mean I'm going to ask you this entirely on an exam or a quiz that happens every single time. You're going to ask me that question. That's not always going to happen. All right. So here, I won't even go through it. Just, just read this and go through the process. Make sure you're able to understand each and every, these, each and every one of these concepts when you encounter a question. What's important important are the assumptions and the point estimates regarding um in the standard errors regarding um confidence intervals so confidence interval for one population mean the assumptions are that the data is random the observations are independent your your point estimate if you haven't heard that terminology before all that is, is just a sample mean it's going to be what you're going to be using to approximate or estimate your mu your standard error, oh, this is important. <laughs> One more time, this is important. If I actually had time to make graphics, I'll say this is important. Um, the standard error is going to measure how your statistic varies from sample to sample based on the sample size, okay? So it just tells you how X bar is gonna vary. And for those that have taken, all everyone has taken this, but um, this is connected to the central limit theorem, but I'm not gonna emphasize this here, emphasize that here. Um, and that's how you, that's the, that's the part of the process. Okay. Um, finding the point estimate standard error. All right. So then for confidence intervals, I'll be nice. I'll give you a hint, a big thing. When you're doing a confidence interval for one population proportions, you have to do N times P hat is greater than or equal to 10. And N times Q hat or N times one minus P hat is the same thing. Q hat is equal to one minus P hat. And that's greater than or equal to 10. And that the data is random. So the data has to be random in both situations. Okay. Your point estimate is simply just P hat, the approximation to our estimation of P. So you use P hat from the, from the sample. And it's the standard error, again, big. Doo, 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 doo. This is important. P hat, I mean, square root of P hat times one minus P hat over N is going to be your standard error. Okay. So this is a nice place to pause the video. Hold on. Yeah. Pause the video and answer these questions in your notes. I'm going to assume that you paused. <laughs> All right. As n increases, ideally your interval will decrease, will shrink, right? We'll do it like this. It would widen when it's, um, when the n, decre n decreases. So when you get less data, you're, you're going to become less certain about your, your information. But when you get more data, this says, this is more data. This tells me that the interval should get closer and closer to the true parameter. When your data has more variability in it, ideally, what you're going to see is that it's going to widen so you're less certain. Okay. And then opposite is if you're more less certain. If you're more, if you have less variability, your, your actual interval will decrease, will shrink. Um, standard error increases means more variability, so therefore it should widen. That's annoying. Um, opposite, so standard error decreases, it's going to shrink. Great, fantastic. What happens to the interval as the level of confidence increases? That makes it wider. So the more confident you are, the wider your interval will be. Okay? And then opposite, if, it, if you decrease, your confidence decreases, that's going to make your interval shrink. Okay, and again, we're not doing the math because that I'm more interested in you understanding understanding this conceptually speaking. So if that didn't make sense, guess what you can do? Rewind, rewind. Let me stop. I'm not gonna do this again. So even if I'm being silly, I'm not gonna do this again. All right. So so then the statistical process for hypothesis testing for one population, um, the mean or are you in a proportion? It, it's a parameter. Okay, it's in, this is just the statistical process. These are the things that you should be thinking about every single time that you do an hypothesis test. 
okay doesn't mean i'm going to ask you everything right but it means that you should be thinking of these things so when it comes to hypothesis testing for one population mean the data needs to be random observations are independent great data random okay you can have a right tail test a left tail test a two tail test i know some of you all want me to <laughs> do an example of all three but it's not possible we don't have the time but the two tail test is unique in comparison because you're looking at two tails you're looking at two um if i were to draw this out this is going to be bad this would be oh wow that's a decent, that's a decent job this in itself it would be a right tailed this in itself would be a left tailed right this would be a two-tailed right i think i did a decent job right and so if you if it say, says in the problem that something's more than you're looking at a right tail if it says something that's less than you're looking at less than you're looking at it's less than something you're looking at less than sign if it says that it's not equal to or it's equal to a particular value you know four facts gonna be not equal to so you have to understand synonyms a question came came up during class yesterday in terms of um in terms of this and i and i hopefully that i'm still being recorded can you still see me i can't see me who cares about me all right so um ideally you would want to make sure that you um specify whether it's right tail left tail or um two tail okay it won't let me scroll. Exit drawing. Okay, jikes. <laughs> what is something important to know? If sigma is known, right? If sigma is known, we're going to use we're going to use it rather than s. Sigma is the population what? Standard deviation. S is the sample what? Standard deviation. Okay. Um, we can ignore this for now. We're going to ignore this. Um, hypothesis testing for one population proportion. Now look at this. This is different. From confidence intervals, okay, n times p is greater than equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p or n times q, which is 1 minus p, is greater than equal to 10, and the data is random. So make sure you note that. When for hypothesis testing, it's p, and for confidence intervals, it's p hat. And the reason for that is because the hypothesis, I mean, sorry, for, because of the central limit theorem, okay? And so we start the left tail, right tail, and so on in terms of the confidence intervals. I mean, in terms of hypothesis testing, in terms of four population proportions, this is the, the test statistic. I didn't get to highlight that there. I'm sorry. This is how you calculate your test statistic for hypothesis testing for the pop one population mean. And this is how you calculate your test statistic for one population proportion. And the test statistic, now this is important. The test statistic in both situations means the number of standard errors p hat is from p this is going to be huge i'm going to talk about this a lot this quarter but i'm going to say it again the test statistic denotes the number of standard errors x bar is from mu okay so if it's far that means that we have a large p value that means that we are going to reject our null hypothesis okay we have evidence against our null hypothesis and so something that can be said, what implications can are uh, what implications can be said about the p-value of the test statistic is large? Okay, that implies that the p-value is small. Okay. And what if what can be implications can be said if the p value about the test statistic about the test statistic if the p-value is large, that means that the test statistic is close to zero. Okay. Test statistic is close to zero. Okay, we're only missing ten minutes, so I'm about to just I'm about to be done here. This is the last one. When to use the T versus the Z? So here we have the T distribution. They look quite similar. They look quite similar. All right, this is let's say this is the T, a little wider, and then this is the the Z. The T distribution has fatter fatter tails because of variability. Okay, to account for a small sample size. So when you have a small sample size, standard deviation, the same standard deviation is given to you and nothing stated about the population distribution, you're going to use the T. If any of these break, is if N is greater than 30, you we use normal, we use Z. If sigma is given to you, use Z. If, if we know that the, the distribution is normal, we use Z. 
that's it folks